Uh, so good morning, everybody. As I always say just now, welcome to our Magic Makeup Monday. Um, we are going to talk about uh, winter skin rescue today. It seems to be the absolutely perfect time to do that because it's February. And in February, we're, we're kind of at peak winter ghastliness, I always think. Um, hopefully, by in a month's time, uh, we'll be thinking about spring and uh, it'll be a bit lighter, perhaps a little bit warmer. But at the moment, it's still quite cold and we're right at the tail end of the winter months hopefully, as I said. So what, what impact is that likely to have had on your skin? And um, I just want to talk through, through some of the ways that your skin does get affected uh, through the winter time. And then I'm gonna pass over to Sally, who's gonna do some demos uh, with you. Um, so the first thing to say about, about winter skin is obviously what happens is that when you go out, you're in an environment which is particularly um, I would say harsh on skin, especially older skin. Older skin is thinner and more delicate than younger skin. So older skin gets affected by the sort of harsher um, wintry conditions than, um, than younger skin does. And that's because, as I said, it's thinner, it tends to be more dehydrated. So if you, if you go out and there's a blast of cold air, especially if it's windy on your face, your skin is extremely vulnerable to that. And the effect of it is that it dehydrates your skin even more. And it also can have, it can create a sort of like raw look. And, you know, we call it looking chapped that's the expression for it and you can have chapped lips and even your cheeks can become chapped and it's because as i said because the the, the winter weather has actually had quite a damaging effect on your skin um and not only that when you're indoors it's also not a perfect environment for your skin because if you've got central heating on then you're also in an extremely drying environment. So you've got this double whammy, wherever you are in the winter, your skin is going to be affected by that. So anything and everything that you can do uh, to help that, to, to, to stop that having a dramatic effect, the better. I think the second way that, that you can look, your skin can look quite um, challenged, let's, let's say in the, in the winter time, this certainly happened to me, is that we tend to eat different foods in the winter time. We're not eating salads all the time. We're not eating lovely, light, uh, gorgeous, nutritious food, which is, uh, which is quite nourishing for the skin. We tend to, well, I do anyway, you, you tend to want something warming. You want something that makes you feel better, you know, comfort foods, all that sort of stuff. And what happened to me over Christmas, I, my skin has been better recently and by better I mean I've, I've had long periods of acne rosacea and my skin had cleared up cleared up cleared up cleared up I was really thrilled cut down on a lot of sugar cut down on a lot of stuff that I was eating that was not good for me and you know I, my skin was really quite clear and then we hit the Christmas period and somebody who shall be nameless gave me a very big box of quality street for Christmas and it was sitting on the side and every time I walked by I had one you know like you do oh, this is just a little chocolate, this isn't gonna do any harm. Anyway, the end result of that was quite shocking. And it was shocking in the sense that suddenly back they came, the lumps, the bumps, the, the, the soreness, the redness, um, and, and with quite a vengeance. Now I'm very good at covering it up and camouflaging it, it really depressed me. And because it's like, I thought I was over all that. I thought I could indulge in the odd chocolate and um, pudding, you know, sticky toffee. Christmas, custard, all that stuff. And of course I can't, I can't because the internal mechanism for me in terms of my, you know, my whole digestive system and so on, obviously if I have too much excess of those kind of very sweet carbohydrate foods, my skin will react against, the, against that. So that's another thing, the comfort eating that we tend to indulge in over, over Christmas is not so healthy and good for our skin as it is when we're eating summer stuff. And the second, and the third thing is, is not being very well. Um, I can speak from experience at the moment. I started to get quite a nasty cough on Friday. My, my grandson Rory's had a terrible cold all last week. He was off school a couple of days and I've obviously caught his cold. So coughing like crazy. And um, actually I woke up this morning, I felt absolutely diabolical. And I sat very still on my sofa, I had a very bad headache. I sat very still on my sofa about three quarters of an hour, took a migraine tablet and I'm, I'm now fine. But I feel under par and I think we all know what that feels like and of course if you don't feel terribly well you actually uh, show it in your skin. Now fortunately I've got Look Fabulous Forever makeup 
And uh, I have put lots of that on this morning to compensate. And uh, hopefully you would never know if you saw me or met me that uh, any of those things uh, had been happening. So that's the good news. The good news is you can camouflage it. And the other bit of good news is that you can, you can do an awful lot to help your skin along. And that's what uh, Sally's gonna demonstrate this morning. I will mention uh, now, and I'll also mention at the end, we've got, uh, this co has coincided with an absolutely brilliant skincare offer that we have, which is 25% off on every single thing that Sally is gonna be showing you this morning and, and looking at um, with the code SPA, S-P-A. Um, so that's good news for anybody who would like to try any of these products, you haven't tried them before, or you would actually like to stock up on some of your favorites. So on that note, I'm gonna hand over to Sally who um, is not looking as made up as I am, <laughs> but um, she still looks gorgeous. Uh, so over to Sally. Thank you, everybody. I'm just pouring water into my bowl to do this demonstration by my computer. So yes, I do feel very, very naked this morning with no makeup on, looking very glamorous with my headband, but um, everyone, everyone on screen looks gorgeous. So um, hopefully when I put my makeup on later, I will look as good as you. Um, I totally agree with everything that Tricia says about winter skin and I find that my skin <clears throat> definitely needs a lot more TLC in the winter because you're sort of going from the cold to the warm and the central heating etc. Um, and for me regular exfoliation is a really big key point of keeping my skin looking good and more importantly making my makeup look so much better. Um, so what I want to demonstrate to you this morning is the use of the lovely, lovely gentle face exfoliator. Um, because that's, well, I, I personally love this. And I was so excited when Look Fabulous Forever brought this product out. Um, so as you can see, I have got no makeup on. Um, what I did last night, obviously, is I took my makeup off with um, the Clean Sweep Eye Makeup Remover. Um, I love this product. If you haven't tried it, it's definitely worth trying um, because I've used makeup, eye makeup removers that have taken my lashes off because they're so harsh. This one really does condition your lashes. It's got daisy flower extract in it and it's got vitamin E and my lashes have never felt better. Um, it can, and it gets off the eye makeup, the um, waterproof mascara, which I wear most of the time. So I used that last night. This morning, I have already used my cleanser. Um, cleansers are really important and knowing which is the right cleanser in the winter is important. Um, and the perfectly clean cleanser, again, if you've never tried it, it's fantastic because it's really quite hydrating. It's, it's light, but it's also moisturizing um, and it's got the most amazing ingredients. It, it reads like a sort of recipe. It's got grape leaf, olive, lemon, thyme, fennel um like a mediterranean sort of recipe and it's brilliant it's got something called prickly pear which hydrates the skin and it's got vitamin e in it um i love to use it i use it morning and night i massage it in and then i take it off with uh, a flannel or a washcloth in warm water and that's the other key in winter don't it's very tempting to use really hot water on your face and on your body but actually you're better to not have a boiling hot bath, really, really hot or really, really hot shower for, for winter skin, because it's better just to be a little bit more temperate and just to go for something you know, warm, but not, not boiling. That can also really affect your skin and its sensitivity. OK, so let's get on to the exfoliator. Um, you can use it morning or night. I tend to do it in the evening, which I'll talk about later, but obviously it's morning now. Um, and let me tell you what it's got in it, first of all, before I start to apply it. So it has very gentle papaya fruit enzymes. So that's sort of natural fruit acids, but it's also got um, naturally derived silica. So it's really, really fine grains. And that for me is really important. I hate putting something on my skin that is really harsh and just feels like it's ripping my skin apart. This one doesn't at all. It's very, very fine, but the grains do remove the dead skin cells. And as Trisha said, you know, as we get older, our skin actually is slower to um, rip, Go, go through its process of removing its own dead skin cells, its own self exfoliation. It takes longer. And I find I get a lot of um, buildup of dead skin cells around my nose. 
particularly in the winter, all year round, but particularly in the winter. And this product is fantastic at removing that dead skin so that when I put my makeup on, so if I've got a really important makeup event, I want my makeup to look really good, I make sure I use this the night before and your makeup will go on even better the next day. Um, so it's got glycerin as well and it's got shea butter. Um, so I like to apply, you can apply it to dry skin, but I personally like to apply it to slightly damp skin. So what I would do is would, would cleanse my skin, make sure there's no makeup on it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of just a damp flannel. So I've got a little bit of water on my skin. You don't have to, you can put it on dry skin, but I prefer it to be slightly damp. Okay. Very interesting to do it in your, in your computer room. So I take probably about that much product on my face. You don't need loads. And you just put it on. Bits that people often forget, and I think Trish is going to talk about this a bit later, is this area, your jawline. Um, and she'll explain why that's good. Now, really important to put it on this, this bit of your nose. And what you then do is you literally use circular motion to just go round and round and round and in, really get into all the nooks and crannies. It's just so fine that it doesn't feel scratchy. And fingers. It doesn't take long. I avoid the, the, the sensitive, delicate eye area. Um, but cheeks, this area is really important. You can sort of go down the neck if you want to, but I tend to just sort of go to the to the jawline. And literally, it takes a few minutes. I do it probably twice a week, this particular product. Um, and as I said, if I've got an important look, I want to look really good with my makeup, I would use it the night before. Um, and I find then my makeup just goes on really, really well. So there you go, that is it, simple. You can do it as much as you want, but just a few minutes. What I then do is to take a flannel um, and some warm water, again, not boiling water, but not cold, and just wipe it off um, to get all the grains off. So. I won't let you sit there and watch me do it all. I'll hand back to Tricia at this point, but I'll get it all off. And then I'm going to show you what I do next and how it works. But it already my skin is feeling fantastic just doing that, just using this product. So I'll hand back to Tricia while I get it off. <laughs> OK, um, so th uh, thanks, Ali, for demonstrating that. And I think that's quite helpful um, just to remind you that, that what it's for. Actually, I, I often show people this. Um, which is a piece of cardboard, <laughs> but it's brilliant because cardboard is, is um, quite a good illustration of what skin is like. So, you know, skin is three layers, basically. Um, very, very, it's very thin. I mean, skin isn't, you know, you don't, it's not sort of like that thickness. It's, it's, it's a very um, fine thickness, but within that, there are three layers, incredibly, and each layer is in, is very important. So you've got the outside layer, the epidermis, which is the bit that you see when you look at people. And that's the bit that Sally is, is, is actually um, affecting with her exfoliation. You've got the bit in the middle, which is the dermis. And that's a bit like, the, why cardboard's so good is because cardboard is to protect things, isn't it? You put, you put cardboard around something to protect it. And of course our skin keeps our insides in, as you know, uh, there's a song, isn't there? Keeps your skin, your skin is, is good because it keeps your insides in. And it's, it's a protective layer against, you know, everything that goes on outside the sun, the uh, environment and all that kind of stuff. And the dermis has got this scaffolding in it. It's the, it's the thing that makes skin plump. And I think most of you know that, that the dermis is the thing that starts to be affected with age. So postmenopausally, the dermis, the bit in the middle of the scaffolding bit, 
makes your skin look plump and so on and so forth, starts to lose a lot of its um, oomph. By oomph, I mean the elastin, which makes your skin stretchy. We were having a discussion last week with a fine bedding company about pillows, and we had a couple of people in my group recommended satin pillows, and they said they're absolutely amazing. And before I had a satin pillow, what was happening was I was waking up and I'd, I'd have lines on my face from the sort of creases of the pillow. And of course, when you're young, those kind of lines on your face pop back very quickly. Um, and the older you are, the longer the lines last. If you if you have a mark on your face from, from your pillow because you slept on something overnight. And I find now if I if I wake up and I've got some kind of line on there, which I know has come from my bedding, um, that popping up, popping back to normal uh, takes maybe two or three hours, a long time. And it's because my skin, the, the dermis of my skin has lost quite a lot of elastin, collagen, and, and, and that scaffolding that young skin has got in, uh, you know, in, in considerable uh, quantity. And then you've got the, the, the bottom layer, which is the hypodermis, which is where all the sort of blood vessels and everything are, which are, which are there to, um, I say, nourish the skin, make the skin look healthy. So what Sally's doing with exfoliation, she is only affecting the outer layer. And the reason that I say that's very, very important, that the dermis is, is not to be interfered with. And just an aside, and I, I'm sorry if I'm going off piste a little bit with this, but I watched a television program, I think it was two weeks ago, and I can't remember when it was, I, ITV or Channel 4, I can't remember, it wasn't BBC. And it was about cosmetic treatments and how it's the wild west out there. And um, I, I could literally, with no training whatsoever, buy derma fillers on the internet right now. You have no idea what's in it. It's not regulated at all, but I could buy something called a dermal filler. It would be delivered to my house and I could literally put a sign up in the window in the afternoon and say, get your dermal fillers here. And I could offer it really yeah, quite competitive price because the derma fillers that I would be buying on the internet would be quite cheap. Goodness knows what would be in them. And I could buy myself a hypodermic needle and with no medical training, no, no guidance whatsoever, I could take those, that, that, those dermal fillers and start injecting them in people's faces. And believe it or not, that is happening as I'm speaking right now to women in this country. And the thing about that is also, I would have no insurance and anyway, I wouldn't be able to get insurance. And if, if something went wrong and the chances of it going wrong are extremely high in the hands of somebody who does not know what they're doing, then what you could end up with lumps, bumps. Um, I mean, people have had the most appalling injuries done to their faces through this process. There's no law against it. There's no protection for anybody. It's literally like the Wild West. Now, I think that's wrong and I, I hope they'll do something about it. I think they will quite soon because it's such a terrible area. But what, what the, you're doing with dermal fillers, um, and I don't know whether anybody on this call actually has dermal fillers or, or has any injectables in their face. Obviously, you know how I feel about it. I'm not going to try and persuade you otherwise. I mean, it's up to you. But the thing is that what they're doing is they're trying to put, put back, a filler is designed to put back that plumping effect that you get from um, the, you know, the elastin and the collagen that's in your skin um, when you're younger. So it pushes, it pushes the skin out, reducing the effect of wrinkling, you know, the, the wrinkling on your skin. Um, and in theory, it will make you look younger. I mean, I'm presumably why that, that's why people do it. Now, I suppose as long as you're in the hands of a professional and by professional, I mean somebody who's medically qualified, so they know exactly what to do and how to do it. Um, you know, some women swear by it. And like I said, I've never been interested and I can't see any reason to do it. But the whole point about this is that you can affect the dermis. You can affect the, the epidermis. Let's talk about that in a second. You can affect the dermis with the quality of the products that you use. And the ingredients that are in, certainly in our skincare, are designed to nourish support and actually make sure that the epidermis and the dermis are as, as sort of healthy and, and supported and well-nourished as they could possibly be. 
and that you know obviously not with anything like fillers or anything but that is that is the value of skincare so if you use skincare you are actually doing everything you can to make your skin look better now the epiderm is the outside bit the bit that gets affected by the by the rain and the and the winter and everything like that the reason you 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 take off the um the dead skin cells on the surface skin is constantly renewing itself in the sense that you know you haven't got the same skin now all over your body as that you had when you were a baby oh my goodness wish wish that we did given how beautiful baby skin is so skin is constantly renewing and obviously it will only renew to the extent that it is able to renew it's not going to renew back to a 20 year old skin it's still going to renew you back to a 75 year old skin in my in my case but it is renewing it is renewing itself and in that process of renewal the the top layer has to us uh, i never know how to pronounce it as it slough itself off <laughs> s-l-o-u-g-h um so it has to be got rid of now that was that's a natural process and that will happen anyway and, and i think if you wear quite if you use um flannel washcloths there's a sort of daily uh, exfoliation going on but using an exfoliator is an excellent way of just ensuring that you are ridding yourself of those dead skin cells and why do you do that because if they stay on the skin I don't know if you've ever noticed, um, I see it on some women that I meet, they'll get these sort of flaky dry patches, especially around this, the base of their nose and stuff where, where Sally said, make sure you get really into there. And also along the jawline because the face gets quite a lot of natural exfoliation going on, but those little areas here and here often don't get touched. So exfoliation, especially gentle exfoliation is brilliant for getting rid of those dead skin cells. Now, just picking up on what Sally said again about the jawline, um, we have questions all the time about uh, pilling, and I've made a, a special video about this, but I am going to mention it um, on this because it's very relevant to, uh, to exfoliation. So this is our cover to co um, co continuous cover foundation. I use it every morning. I've got it on now and I love it. I think it's, I think it's an excellent product. Now, people will say, I can't use your foundation. It pills like it's, it's, this is the problem here. Now, I'm going to put some on the back of my hand. Now, my hand is clean. In fact, I've washed my hands this morning, uh, specifically making, making sure they're completely, completely devoid of any, any uh, you know, stuff on the surface. Now, if I rip rub this into my hand, you can see it's rubbing in uh, beautifully. It's very smooth. It's covering up the, it's very, it's very quickly covering up the age spots that I've got in my hand and it's creating this lovely creamy smooth surface. Absolutely no pilling whatsoever. And there's no pilling whatsoever because the product isn't pilling. It's the, the, the pilling is caused by a number of different factors and you have to decide which factor it, yours happens to be. So the most common factor is that the ingredients in this are incompatible with the ingredients in your skincare. Now they are. This is completely compatible with our skincare. Of course it is. I made a. I, I went to a lot of trouble to ensure there was absolutely no pilling between this and our skincare. But there are quite a lot of skin uh, 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 skincare ingredients which do not mix so what's in here doesn't mix with the skincare ingredients and you get pilling um it, and it's quite distressing because you feel like as you put your makeup on it's kind of coming off and it's coming off in these little balls and you can look down and you're absolutely covered in it now i do get pilling with this sometimes under two circumstances one is i haven't exfoliated this area and as i smooth my foundation down my face it's fine all the way around here until I get to those bits where I haven't exfoliated and they will be around my hairline and down onto my jawline so as I come down here it all starts to go into little balls of product so it's a mixture of, of um, my skin the dead skin and the foundation that I put on and as I sweep it down I can feel it so I mean there is a solution to it and it's not you don't have to you know it's not big deal in a way just get a big fat brush and just just do that get rid of the pills and you will find that it, you, your makeup will look absolutely fine I'll get and I'll get it definitely in my hairline so that's that's showing that um, dead skin cells really do collect 
around the outer edge of your face and that's because daily you're not doing any any sort of gentle exfoliation with, with flannels and things like that um, and the second reason that I get pilling is when I'm in a hurry there's two, th two things about it and I've put on too much skincare and I haven't given it time to absorb now with skincare, this is what, what Sally is going to demonstrate next, there is, there is an optimal amount to apply. And we tend to think, I've been talking about, you know, the harshness of, of winter weather and, and central heating and all that kind of stuff. So we tend to think, oh, skin needs lots of extra moisture, lots of extra nourishing. I must put a lot extra on. And we kind of slap it on so that it's really, really quite thick. You know, it's like more is more. And surely if I put more on, it's going to do more good. It's going to be less, you know, more hydrating and so on. Actually, that is completely wrong. And um, I, you know, I sell skincare, so I don't know why I'm encouraging you to use very little of it. But actually, you don't need a huge lathering, um, layering of skincare. If you put the right amount on, Sally's going to demonstrate that in a second or two, A, your skin can absorb it successfully. It can actually absorb that skincare very nicely so that it goes beautifully into your skin. And then when you do come to put on any foundation, your foundation will just smooth, it will just go really smoothly over it. If you put too much on, you'll get quite a lot of pilling and you'll get quite a lot of pilling because the skin can't absorb the product that you're putting on so you've got you've got some some will have absorbed but you've got a surface layer and as this hits that surface layer that hasn't absorbed especially if you're in a hurry it'll it'll just start to slide off so not too much and leave a good gap as long as possible i tend to put my skincare by, by skincare i mean hyaluronic acid rich hydration whole serum and the day cream on as early as I can in the cycle of me getting up and ready um, so I will cleanse my face put that on and then I'll do everything else that I'm, I'm going to do you know I get washed and dressed and and um, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I should start coughing in a bit I was going to say shaved but I don't shave you know it is a men, men, men say they get washed and shaved no I don't shave um, but you know the sort of whole preparation that you have for your face you do that get it done, uh, get, you know, go and get dressed and, and then sit down. And, and even sometimes, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts, I'll sort of put a podcast on and listen to a bit of that, or I'll get my makeup on that. And I know that my skin is really, really ready at that point to be happy with the skin, uh, with the makeup that I'm gonna, uh, gonna add. And just a final thing before I hand back to Sally, again, developing an exfoliator. Um, I've used a lot of different exfoliators in my life and the older you are, the more fine the grains must be that are in the product that you're using. So in cheaper exfoliators and certainly exfoliators sold for younger skin, they'll put things like walnut husk and stuff like that in, you know, they're, they're sort of fine grains of, of uh, I mean, walnut husk, you know how hard a, hard a walnut is, how hard that outer, outer shell of a walnut is. Well, imagine that ground down and how hard those, those little um, grains uh, are gonna be on your skin. Now that's fine if your skin's really young, your skin will be fine with that. And it actually it will be, it will exfoliate that very successful. But imagine the harshness of walnut husks uh, ground, ground up in exfoliator for a skin like mine. So your skin's much more delicate when you're older, it's thinner and it, it really, really needs to be treated with uh, care and, and kindness. So our exfoliator and like Sally, I was delighted when we developed it and got it because it's like, you almost can't feel the grains, but the grains are there and they're really working to bring your uh, that surface area um, back to, to the state that you want it to be in. So I hope that was helpful. And um, as I said, if you do get pilling, there are other reasons. There is uh, There are about four or five or six other reasons why you get pilling. Um, so just, just go into YouTube and, and put in Tricia Custon, go onto our channel and put uh, why makeup, why my makeup might be pilling. And there's a video from me uh, going through all the reasons. But the, I think the two key, key reasons I've mentioned there, one is uh, the fact that your skin is an exfoliator. The second is that you've um, got too much product on. Uh, so back to Sally, who will show you exactly how much product you need to use. 
Thank you, Tricia. That's really helpful, actually. Really helpful advice. Um, so my skin now, before putting any moisturiser on, feels completely different to how it did. First thing, it feels really, really smooth. So it makes a massive difference. Um, I actually usually, as I said earlier, like to do the um, exfoliation process at night. And I like to set up and do a little mini home spa. And in fact, we have got quite soon, I think, a video coming out about home spas on YouTube. So just watch. I think we do we do a, a new video every Monday. So it might be tonight that, that it comes out or today. So watch out for that. But what I would then do after using the exfoliant, I would then put on the hydrating clay mask which again is a fantastic, reasonably new product um, that is, because a lot of masks are quite drying. This one has got kaolin in, um, but it is super hydrating at the same time. I don't know how they created this mask because you put it on and you feel like it's doing some good, but it's also hydrating. So it's, it's just fantastic. Um, I think it's got sweet almond oil and aloe vera in it as well. So I would, what I tend to do is I run a bath. If you, if you have, some people have baths, some people don't, but if you've got a bath, it's really nice to, to actually exfoliate, put the mask on, have the bath and just relax in the bath and then take your mask off and then go on to the products that I'm going to demonstrate now. So I think that the Hydration Hold Serum is a must. If you haven't tried this, this is a wonderful product. Um, people get confused between this serum and the face primer, they're quite different. This is skincare, whereas the Smooth Light Silk face primer is a makeup product. So as Trisha said, this is, this is I try and do this like Trisha does first and my moisturizer, and then I have a break before I put my makeup on. I do something else, brush my teeth, have breakfast, do get dressed, that sort of thing. So try and keep that, that sort of gap between the skincare and the makeup. So the serum, this product, it's a little pipette, um, it comes in a little pipette and you don't need very much like all the products. I, what I do is put a couple of drops onto my hand and then I just put it, it goes on beautifully. So what is this? It is a product that contains hyaluronic acid. Now hyaluronic acid is something that we naturally produce. It's not a nasty, scary acid. It's something that we all produce. Um, in, the, in our skin and in our joints, and it's a humectant. So what it does is it binds moisture to itself um, and it can hold up to a thousand times its weight in, in um, water molecules. So it is a moisture magnet so that if you put your moisturizer on top of it, it means that your moisturizer works even better. So it kind of plumps the skin and it um, hydrates the skin and therefore reduces the appearance of those fine lines and, and wrinkles. It's very soothing as well. It's, I always feel when I put it on, I feel really comforted. It's a really nice texture. It's quite cooling as well. Um, good for the skin's elasticity, um, which also goes as we get older and it strengthens the skin's barrier function. We've got a, a barrier. Um, it contains another ingredient, pro-vitamin B5, which also supports skin barrier repair. So a thin layer, that's all you need, thin layer, and then you seal it in using your moisturizer. So I use it morning and night, but obviously it's morning now, so I am going to use it with my Smooth the Face Day Cream. Now, again, as Trisha said, it's very easy to be super you know let's put some more on it's winter let's slap it on I don't use very much at all I probably use no more than that no more than that for the whole face and neck and I and what I do is I dot it in in the areas don't forget your neck and your decolletage I wish someone had told me to moisturize my neck when I was younger because I didn't I used to just do my face and um you know now I'm, I'm regretting that so that's absolutely plenty, probably too much. I'll probably put too much on to do this demonstration. And you can see it goes in beautifully and you really do not need loads at all. Um, I don't put it right on the eye area, but just sort of around the eye. And at, at night I use the, the um, lovely Night Revive eye cream, but smells gorgeous as well this one it's got an SPF it's got an SPF of 10 UVA and UVB 
and it's got vitamins A, C, E and F. So it's full of all the goodies that we need for our skin. Um, you know, I've still got some left, so I put too much on my hand. So you can see how little you need. You really don't. If you've got any left, I always put it down here or even on my hands. Um, but it's really nice to get it on your neck. So it doesn't feel sticky, it doesn't feel clammy, um, but I wouldn't then go straight in to putting on my Smoother Face um, primer. I would wait a few minutes, wait as, as Trisha said, do something else if you can and let, let the layering process work and then you'll find that you definitely don't get any pilling or any, any problems at all. Um, but really, really beautiful day cream. At night, I am, really impressed with the deeply dreamy night cream um again it's a very very rich product it's got more of the hyaluronic acid in it um and it's also got vitamin e in it and tripeptide so it's it's a very soothing product again if you haven't tried it you don't need very much at all but i would do the same process i would put my hydration hold face serum on first and then similar amount of night cream um, on my face and I also love the eye cream and use that um, at night. So this is the eye cream. Again, it's quite a rich product. So you need the tiniest, tiniest amount. And when I do the eye cream, I just dab it around this area, sort of the orbital bone. You don't need to put it, you don't put it on your eyelids. Um, and I, I tend to go sort of out to in, just tapping it in and letting that absorb and use that at night. And then I find if I've done moisturization of my eyes at night, I get far less creasing around the eye area if I'm using concealer the next day. It makes a massive difference for me if I've got not dry, if you've got dryness around your eyes, you're much more likely to get that sort of little bit of creasing when you put concealer on. So really, really good. Um, and that's got in it, again, hyaluronic acid, it's got vitamins A, B3, C and E, um, and something called Camellia Japonica oil. So the other thing that the eye cream's got is it's got a natural products that help um, to stop, um, help with your, it's sort of light diffusing. So it stops with um, dark circles. If you've got dark circles on your eyes, it's a color correcting sort of pigment that helps with dark circles. So it's a very, very clever product. Um, so my skin now, it feels great. It feels smooth. It feels ready to go, ready to put my makeup on. Lips. I want to talk about lips as well, because in the winter, you might find that you get much, much drier lips, chap lips. You can get something called lick e eczema. So you're constantly, I don't know if any of you find that in the winter, you're constantly licking your lips and then they go sore. Um, and then that's a, it's a vicious circle then. So again, look, Fabius Reva have the answer to this. Um, the, the lip balm, the moisturizing lip balm, if you haven't tried it, Fantastic. At the moment, it comes in a natural shade, it's dropped something, and a shade that is actually slightly pinky. It doesn't come out this pink. It just gives you a very light sort of pinky tint, which I know is really, really popular. And Trisha told me the other day, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that one is coming out. I'm not quite sure when, she might be able to tell me, that is a warm base, because obviously I'm warmer. Um, so I think they're bringing one out that is not quite as cool pink, but is more warm, but that will have a tint. So I'm super excited about that because I play quite a lot of tennis and I am always where I wear the lip balm. I would always go out with lip balm on. So if I can wear my nice warm color tinted one, I will be so excited. Um, so this one again has got apricot oil, which is fantastic. It's got olive oil, sweet almond oil, um, shea butter, cocoa extract, um, which is in anti-inflammatory as well. So I'm just gonna pop some of the, the plain one on and it makes a massive difference to my lips. Um, if you have got really chapped and dry lips, Again, it's really good to exfoliate your lips and you can either do that, there's various ways to do it. You can make your own little home exfoliant um, with brown sugar and olive oil and all sorts of things like that. Or you can just put some lip balm on, and I've mentioned this before, take a, a small baby's dry, just a gentle toothbrush and literally massage the dry flakiness off your lips 
and then put more balm on and do that before you go to bed and you'll find that your the dry bits just go and that makes a massive difference when you're applying your lipstick the next day as well so it's nothing more unattractive than having really dry flaky lips and drinking water I know it sounds obvious but it's very very easy in the winter to forget to drink water but you do need to hydrate yourself from internally as well as putting things on your face so try if you're finding that you've got dry face dry lips think to yourself how much water am I actually taking every day and you might be surprised that you're not not drinking enough at all so drinking lots and lots of water really important um finally hands 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 just like lips cold weather can massively affect your hands if you're going out and you're unprotected with your hands you might find you get that awful sort of really dry cracked and if any of you've ever had that really nasty dry cracked fingers which can be really painful as well um so really important i mean i'm quite a strong believer in wearing if it's really cold wear gloves do try and protect your hands but hand cream hand cream is amazing and i've just that's what i dropped on the floor excuse me just one second i pick it up my hand cream. so again the hydrating hand cream it's really good to have that literally i have one in the car i keep it in the car you can have it by your sink you can have it if you've got a couple of sinks sort of have it in your handbag and that makes a massive difference to both your nails um, and your hands making them look less dry hands are something that can show age massively so if you can keep your hands really smooth with hand cream and hydrated um, and it smells. I think the smell of this hand cream, if you haven't tried it, is absolutely amazing. It really is. It's got, again, vitamin C. Look, Fabulous Forever are fantastic. As Trisha said, are putting vitamins, vitamins into their skincare and their, their body care. It's got vitamin C and vitamin E. And the more vitamin C, vitamin E and vitamin A you can get onto your skin, the better. Um, it's got something called rock rose extract as well. So beautiful ingredients, shea butter and not greasy, but just leaves your hands feeling really, really smooth so that um, you can just get on with the day and, and not worry about the elements that are out there sort of attacking our, our, our skin in the winter. Um, so I think that is all the, the skincare product. So uh, amazing, I think she's gonna tell you that there is an amazing offer this week. So if you haven't tried them, I really, really recommend giving them a go um, with the offer that's so generous. So I'll hand back to Tricia. I'm ready to put my makeup on and look a bit more glamorous. <laughs> uh, brilliant, Sally, thank you so much. Um, if you've got any questions, um, now is the time to pop them into the, uh, the, the function below. Bryony is sitting there um, ready to, to read those questions out to either Sally or I. So do, you know, if you have, have any queries or questions about the products, about anything that we've talked about today, any comments that you want to make, uh, please do do that. i will be delighted to answer you. Um, so when I started Look Fabulous Forever, you know, I, it was colour cosmetics that I wanted. And the reason I wanted colour cosmetics rather than starting with skincare was because it's instant, you know, you, you, I felt that if I was going to launch something new and say, this is particularly formulated for older uh, uh, faces, eyes and lips, which is what I did. Um, I wanted to say, look, I'll put it on. This is what I look like without, this is what I look like without it. This is what I look like with it. And uh, there's a sort of instant, <coughs> sorry, almost magic <coughs> effect when you put on makeup. And then, of course, the logic came that uh, if we had things to put on your face, well, we probably need things to help you take it off. Um, and then if you took it off, you'd need to nourish your skin. And then we've extended out into uh, the other things that we've got now, the exfoliator, the clay mask. Uh, because, again, it's really nice to have products in the cupboard that, uh, that you know will have an effect, uh, a good positive effect on your skin. And all the time we've been developing these products, working closely with people who are good at what they do, who know what they're doing. And... Uh, and as Sally said, the ingredients are all designed to support and, and do everything that's needed for older skin to look its absolute best. So I'm, I'm proud of what we've achieved there because I really think it's, um, it, it, it's a range of products that are fantastic. Um, Sally's just mentioned we've got the new uh, lip balm. We were really, I, I was incredibly surprised when we launched the lip balm that the ones that flew off the shelf were the tinted ones, the tinted one that we had. And we, were, we tried very hard with that to get a kind of 
of neutral shade is quite is quite soft in terms of uh, effects it's not a vibrant color um, so but I thought people would would just want the, the untinted one in their pockets when they you know popped out to walk the dog or whatever um, and that that would be really uh, the most popular and it, it isn't at all we sell way way more of the uh, of the tinted one and I think it's because some people really like the idea of not wearing a lipstick but want to have something on their lips which is really protective of of their lips so it can look as though you are wearing a little bit of lipstick but you you've got the extra emollient effect of all those really really um nutrition ingredients to, to help help your lips look better so we've decided now um in fact susie came around last week we were looking through uh, at the, the at the um, samples that we've been sent for the uh, slightly warmer toned one and hopefully we've chosen one that you're going to like and uh, which will work for you if you want a, uh, a warm toned um, lip balm um, so that's all very exciting we'll let you know we've also got just so that you know what's, what's coming down the track. Um, we've had a phenomenal success with our eye pencils, which has been really nice. Um, I think when you produce new products, um, and we've been doing it continually over the last nine years uh, that we've been in business, um, nearly 10 years, we're in our 10th year. Um, when you produce new products, you you know you you have the idea, you hope they're gonna go well, and you hope that people are gonna absolutely love them. And I think, in all that time, the uh, the impact of the eye pencils has really taken us by surprise because it's, it's been phenomenal. I mean, we just, we just keep selling out and we keep selling out because people <laughs> are trying them and they're using, you know, they're, they're maybe buying two or three different colors and so on and so forth. So good news is we've decided to extend the range out a little bit more. Um, we, we sort of spotted a gap, especially with the eye palettes that we have. And we, we've, we're going to produce a really proper navy. So we've got one that's called Ocean Blue, but that's it's quite greeny um, and it is like you know it's like the water of the sea it's like the color of the sea it's like a greeny blue um, so this is a proper uh, you know quite dark navy um, which I'm really looking forward to because I love using midnight blue on my um, lash line and the other one is uh, I think we're going to call it soft purple or something like that so it's if you like the purple palette or you like mm. using or you like using aubergine then the, the purple one will beautifully complement that as an eyeliner as, a, as an eye pencil and you know the pencils are soft and they're smudgeable and um, they're brilliant they're brilliant and I think that's why they've been so popular people have tried them and gone oh like that we'll have another one of those um, so it's been a great success for us which is which is wonderful uh, so so nice when that happens I can tell you so that's a couple of other products that we've got on the um, on the way and uh, uh, I think you'd be well received. So um, let me go to uh, Brian. Have we got any questions? Yes, we've got a couple of questions for you, Tricia. Um, first one was from Carol. She wants to know how you get your skin looking so luminous. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. Um, thank you for the compliment that my skin looks luminous. Um, and given today, I would have liked to, well, no, I wouldn't have liked to have sat here no, at about quarter to nine this morning. Honestly, if you'd seen me, <laughs> you'd have been shocked. I did feel absolutely dreadful. And I just sat downstairs and just, I had a cup of tea. I just sat there and just thought, just be still for half an hour and let this pill that I took, I have amazing migraine tablets, which are so good, let it work. And I started to feel human after 30 minutes. But my skin is um, not naturally luminous, I can assure you. So I think there are two things that make my skin look, um, look have this luminosity. One is our moisturizer. Now, one of the things that I, because I've used lots of different moisturizers in my life, some moisturizers don't enhance the luminosity of your skin because they haven't got the ingredients to do that and some do and I made wanted to make sure that when I put my makeup on top of my moisturizer that my skin would have would sort of shine through but not shiny by shine I don't mean it's shiny but it has that that it, it gives you a base which allows your makeup to look um there is no, I don't think there's another word for it, but but luminous, luminescent. L luminous means, or luminescence is where it's light reflecting. So so the fact is that, you know, a lumen is a, is a, um, 
a quantity of light um, in scientific terms. So luminescence is where, where, the, where the light gets reflected out. And of course, skin that has luminescence looks a lot dewier and it, it, looks, um, it just looks nicer, so that's one. The second is the highlighter. So, you know, having, having got the base right so that your skin, so when you put something like this on, which I do every day, as I said, that doesn't cover that up. It actually allowed, that, that, that allows to come through. The second way that I do it is by using um, the highlighter. Now, our Instant Bright highlighter, if you put it, uh, so I start sort of at the outside edges here and I put it here and I sort of dot it along and then I tap it in. Don't rub it, you just tap it in. And then I put a little bit here. I put a little stripe down the middle of my nose as well. And you can, I didn't this morning, but you can, you can put a little bit around your, um, onto your um, cupid's bow, your, your, your lips here. You can just sort of slightly do that, slightly up into the, um, is that this, this is the septum, isn't it? This, this channel here, you know, you know what I mean? Around there. And that can really make you make, make your lipstick pop. But I think Instant Bright Highlighter is one of those products that's incredibly, I think it's, it's, it's so subtle and yet unbelievably uh, powerful when you, when you put it on. So it's subtle, so it doesn't look white. I haven't got white stripes here or here. It just makes my skin look luminous. I would say also that if you use the right um, foundation, now I, I mix this with a tiny little bit of um, Beauty Balm, um, which colors it slightly. And also it just makes it slightly uh, thinner but I like the effect of that. So I mix it on the back of my hand. It's almost like mixing a palette, you know, when you're a, an artist and put it on. And I think those three things, my moisturizer, the Instant Bright Highlighter and the way that our um, foundation actually is made and, and works on your skin. Modern foundations are unbelievably beautiful, beautiful. When foundations were first introduced all those years ago, and we're talking about the 1920s and 30s, which is when makeup started to be widely available, Max Factor, you know, all those, those brands that we used to know when we were teenagers. Um, foundation was, was pretty horrible, really. Um, it was very heavy. It, it was a. It, it was very much mixed with powders and things like that. So it was quite a deadening product on the skin, and that's why we have memories of our grannies, looking really their skin looking quite mask-like. You know, it, 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 it didn't shine. They didn't have luminescence. They looked very mattified, and um, it, they weren't very flattering. But foundations have got better and better and better and better and the science around makeup has improved and people understand more and more and more and more about what skin needs and how to make it look as good as possible so basically um i'm just going to let brian i don't know why brian has disappeared and i don't know whether i need to let her in or she's still there so i'm, I'm gonna i'm she gonna put know, her, Trisha, she said she doesn't know what happened so she can't get back in i don't think i'm going to admit her Okay. So who knows? Hopefully she'll be yeah. back in. Yeah. Are you back, Bryony? I'm back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know, but I had a thing come up on my screen which said admit Bryony. It's like oh, I just suddenly disappeared. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> the only so, other question was sorry, Bryony. Yeah. Just to finish, I hope that answers your question. So I think luminous is incredibly important, especially on an older face, because it stops that mask-like effect. And they're the three ways I get it. Right, off you go, Brian. Sorry about that, everyone. And the only other question, lots of people wondering about where your lovely sweater is from. <laughs> Shall I show you my lovely sweater? I did just <laughs> so here it is. It's Let's get it the right way around. I'm back to front of this screen. Yeah, there we go. So it's got a big cowl neck. It's this fantastic fantastic bright pink and it's from whistles um it's quite a big sweater so it's the sort of thing to wear over quite narrow trousers if i wear that wear it over big trousers because i've got big bottom half <laughs> i look like a barrage balloon so uh, over slim slim trousers it actually works quite well so it's lovely and warm and because it's such a lovely bright i could never want to look i'm showing my bra strap now so which way do i need to i need to go that way that's it um what was I going to say? Yeah, it was brilliant over Christmas. It's a really good Christmas jumper um, so, because it's bright pink. Well, it's this lovely dark pink. And uh, yeah, I love it. Really love it. It's cosy and, and nice. Whistles, everybody. Uh, that's it. Any more yeah, questions? That's it for today. 
OK, so just a quick reminder, um, you may wonder why we do these incredibly generous offers on skincare every now and again. Well, we know from research, uh, general research and our own research, that people, women are very reluctant to change their skincare. So skincare is one of those things where people become very loyal to a particular brand. They've probably used it for years. They like it. They know that their skin likes it and they're very, very reluctant to change. Now, I was like that because I have such disturbed and difficult skin. I found a brand that I liked. I actually used something called Dr. Pericone, which is an American brand. It was quite expensive, about 60 quid for a, for a pot. Um, but through trial and error, I found it and I liked it. And in fact, per the peri that Pericone skincare became my... Um, you know, when you formulate something new, they say, give it, give us the, the, the base. What, what do you want? You know, give us a skin, give us a skincare, a, a cream that you like. And this can be, I'm not, I don't mean base. I mean, um, and I don't mean archetype. I mean, there's a word for it. Um, it. It's the sort of model that they will take for what they're going to do. So I gave them my pericone, which was actually pink. That, that also was lovely, beautifully luminescent. So I gave it to them and I said, look, <coughs> excuse me. From my own, from my point of view, this is this is a gorgeous cream. I love it. I love the way it feels. I love the smell. I love the texture. I love the way it goes onto my skin. I love the way my skin looks when it's on. And if you can produce me a, um, a moisturizer that does all of those things, I should be very, very happy. And eventually they did. So I think that people are reluctant to change their skincare because they like what, they, what they're buying and they're used to it and they think that, that, that it works really well on skin. So we do these very generous offers to try and tempt you at least to try it. So um, by buying it at 25% discount, um, you are getting, as I say, you're getting a really big bargain and hopefully you'll think, oh, I will try that. I'll try that exfoliator. I'll try that day cream. I'll try that eye cream, whatever. Um, because we know, I think we're very confident if you try it, you'll love it and uh, you want some more. And um, after all, that's what we're trying to do in terms of uh, in terms of a business. Um, so don't forget, 25% off all skincare, and the uh, code for it is SPA. Very simple, just three words: SPA. Apply that when you check out, and hopefully, if you do try it, you'll love it and uh, you'll want to use more. And I'm going to give you just just to finish, and we're nearly at the end. A little tip: I've given this to a few people. People were complaining that oh, I should have one with me and I haven't, it's downstairs. So a square, our container is a square. Now a round container, you can hook your finger around, you get the last little bit out by whipping your finger around and ours are square and the product gets hooked in the, gets trapped in the corners. So my, my tip to you, and it works, I promise you it works because I do it all the time myself. When your skincare gets low and you're trying to get the last little vestiges of it out, turn it on its side and store it so that it's upright like that with the, with the front, front of it here. And then you'll find that the product will, will, over 24 hours, it will slide down. Yeah, like Sally's demonstrating, it will slide down and it will actually only be on one side of the pot. And then you can actually uh, get you know, you can get, get that bit out and then you can turn it. So at the last corner, and I swear to you, I do this now, you'll get every single last scrap of that wonderful moisturizer out of that pot with no difficulty whatsoever. And uh, it's the best tip that I can give you. And I know that you don't like to waste products. So uh, there you go. That's the best, uh, best advice I can give you. So I do hope you'll try it. So bye-bye <laughs> everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.